My brothers and sisters, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We ask that the Lord will bless us today that we may recognize the power of his grace and the goodness that he brings. Lord Jesus, you call us, even in our sinfulness, Lord of mercy. Christ Jesus, in you we find forgiveness. Christ have, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our hope and our salvation. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be ch children of light, Grant that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The span of Sarah's life was 127 years. She died in Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham performed the customary morning rites for her. Then he left the side of his dead one and addressed the Hittites. Although I am a resident alien among you, sell me from your holdings a piece of property for a burial ground that I may bury my dead wife. After the transaction, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the land of Canaan. Abraham had now reached a ripe old age, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Abraham said to the senior servant of his household, who had charge of all his possessions, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not procure a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but that you will go to my own land and to my kindred to get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land? Should I then take your son back to the land from which you migrated? Never take my son back there for any reason, Abraham told him. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house in the land of my kin, and who confirmed by oath the promise he then made to me, I will give this land to your descendants. He will send his messenger before you, and you will obtain a wife for my son there. If the woman is unwilling to follow you, you will be released from this oath, but never take my son back there. A long time later, Isaac went to live in the region of the Negev, the day toward, one day toward evening, he went out in the field, and as he looked around, he noticed that camels were approaching. Rebecca, too, was looking about, and when she saw him, she alighted from her, candle, her camel and asked the servant, Who is the man out there walking through the fields toward us? That is my master, replied the servant. Then she covered herself with her veil. The servant recounted to Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac took Rebekah into his tent. He married her, and thus she became his wife. In his love for her, Isaac found solace after the death of his mother, Sarah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord, or proclaim all his praises? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Visit me with your saving help that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your people, and glory with your inheritance. Give thanks to the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the custom post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I love the fact that uh, Matthew is writing about his own calling here. Uh, this, this section is from the, the, the Gospel of Matthew, and we hear of Jesus' call to Matthew a very unlikely character for Jesus to turn to, to help him in his mission of the salvation of the world. Matthew was a tax collector. Matthew was a Jew. Matthew was a traitor to his own people. Matthew was seen as a collaborator, as, as if we look back at World War II when, when uh, some of the French were collaborating with the Nazis they were hated because they had turned on their own people. And essentially, Matthew, as a Jew, working for the, the Roman Empire, collecting money from his own people and probably extorting them at the same time, taking money from his own people, giving it to the oppressors. And Jesus turns and says, I want you. What an odd call for Jesus to make. Why in the world would he pick someone like Matthew? And I think it's important for us to because, because it's, a, uh, it's, it's a lesson in how Jesus works. He says it today, I did not come to call the righteous but sinners. Jesus came to call sinners. And he has dinner with them. And he eats with them. And he shares time with them. And he talks with them. And he converses with them. And he shares and he teaches and he gives of himself, just like he does here, just like he does with all of us when we come to the Eucharist. He brings all us sinners together, and he says, come here, listen to what I have to say, learn from me, share in this meal. Pope Francis on the Feast of Corpus Christi recently said that the Eucharist is the bread of sinners, not a reward for saints. And, you know, yesterday as I was talking about St. Junipero Serra, a very flawed man in many ways, but yet uh, Jesus called him as well. And there's an expression that says, a saint is a sinner who keeps on trying. A saint is a sinner who keeps on trying. Maybe another way of saying that is, a sinner is a saint in the making. And so sometimes when, as we make judgments and we hear about people making judgments about who should be receiving communion, who should be coming to the table of the Lord and all that, maybe this is a really important gospel to hear. And we need to reflect on that carefully because who we decide is included and who is excluded sometimes can be the judgment that we place on ourselves in the Lord's eye. And that's a very, very piece of thin ice to walk on. So let's ask that God will bless us that we may hear these words, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I did not call, come to call the righteous, but sinners. In other words, he came to call you and me. And aren't we blessed for it? So let's offer our prayers and petitions. We ask that God will help us that we may recognize our own need for his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that we may leave behind our harsh judgments of others and that we may recognize our own uh, blessedness in God's forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who are confused in their faith, who are, feel conflicted, that they may recognize the power of God working in them and allow God to work through them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask that God would help us to have a more peaceful world and a more peaceful country and a more peaceful community that we may turn away from any ways that may bring about violence or pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, who seek God's healing this day, and for those who have died, especially Elizabeth Ernst, who will be buried from our church this morning. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our Mass intention today, Rafina Tongzi, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness and peace, we give you thanks and praise for the mercies that you have shown us. Help us, Lord, to be a merciful people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. O God, who graciously accomplishes the effects of your mysteries, grant that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, St. George, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer a sign of Christ's love and peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite those at home to take a moment now to make an act of spiritual communion.
Let us pray. O Lord, may this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass is ended. We go in peace. And thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, everyone. It's good to see you. All you people over there sitting in the dark, join us in the light. Join us in the light. We like having you with us. And I like to see the whites of your eyes. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.